In the autumn of 2012, a fresh-faced future champion jockey arrived here on the doorstep of Andrew Balding's Kingsclear Yard in what would turn out to be a career-defining move. I think I arrived here late October 2012, not of my own free will. It had been planned that I would come here, I suppose, all through that summer. But it was my first trip abroad on my own. Asheen arrived and he was, he was quite shy and he was quite small and a little bit uncomfortable in, our, in England. I knew in the best interests of trying to be a jockey, I needed to be here and this was the right place and embarrassingly enough I used to cry down the phone to my mother. We sent him off to the apprentice school and I remember uh, Rory MacDonald who uh, was in charge of the racing school uh, and he wasn't at all complimentary about Oshin's attitude so I had to call him into the office and uh, read him the right act and uh, I said right you're going back to the apprentice school to redo the course next week two weeks and if you don't come out with a good report you can go back to, to Ireland and uh, two weeks later I rang Rory and he said outstanding you know and, and that's the thing about Oshin he's such a quick learner he's extremely professional very dedicated to achieving what he's what he has achieved and I think that's uh, you know full credit to him. I like this one. If we look up at the wall, Annalisa or Andrew have very kindly put this picture up to remind me of uh, probably my first big day. Highland Calori won the Air Goal Cup. Highland Calori and Ashim Murphy have won by almost two of them. The Qatar racing colours, they've been pretty important in your career. They have, yeah. I've ridden five group one winners in them. I knew that, we, that Andrew Balding had, a, had this great young talent. Um, but it was when he rode uh, the winners at Air that day when he won the Air Gold Cup that I really sat up and took notice. Um, and we were all, all about trying to bring on and nurture young talent with uh, guitar racing, so he became a very obvious target. 2018, do you class that as your real breakthrough year with the nine Group 1 wins? At the beginning of the season it didn't really happen and um, amazingly it turned around because Roaring Lion, he won four Group 1s. Roaring Lion near side, the Lion rolls at Sandown! Lightning Spear won one. Lightning Spear and Asheen Murphy get through and have won! The Tin Man won one. And the Tin Man has his day in the sun at Haydock. He was a remarkable horse for you, Roaring Line, with those many, many Group 1s, and especially the one on Kipco British Champions Day in the QE2 stakes. It was phenomenal. It was huge to be pre presented um, with the trophy by Her Majesty. My parents were there. Sheikh Fad was there. Sheikh Hamad was there. Super. It was like the crowning moment. It's getting really tight, but Roaring Line, Roaring Line, the star of the season. It was amazing. I don't think that uh, feeling can be replicated again. And it was great that Oshin was on the horse to, to, to do it. It was the biggest stage, it was the biggest race. I think it would have been one of his biggest uh, rides of his career. And he was absolutely perfect. And so after that amazing year with your nine group one wins, did you think, right, next year is going to be the year that I'm going to be crowned champion jockey? I tried last year as well. I just wasn't good enough. Sylvester was away and gone very early. Yeah, I'm, I've been really pleased. I've been lucky though. I've ridden for so many trainers and so many different owners who really got behind me. Under Oshin Murphy and Deirdre for Japan wins the Nassau. How would it feel to be crowned champion jockey on Kipco for the Champions Day? It would be huge and obviously I don't really know what to expect. It's something I've worked towards and um, I like to think with the help of everybody it'll be like um, Andrew Bowling and Sheikh Fad's championship as well.